So he beats the shit out of all these people, leaving only the limo driver. This poor limo driver. Uh, Rip yanks him out, and sure enough, they're just staring at the guy. What's that smell? Do, do, dookie. Dookie. <laughs> and he throws the poor bastard. No, but he says it like Braveheart says, freedom. He's like, dookie. Actually, he, he did, we don't see the throw. He's holding him up by his collar. And honestly, I hadn't seen this movie since the theater in 1989. That's the only thing I've always remembered about this movie was that was dookie, dookie scene. scene. What adult uses the word dookie? Well, first of all, do you notice when he yanks him out of the thing, you oh, see, yeah, his see his ass? ass it's all soaking wet. Soaking wet. <laughs> that guy had some major well, he, diarrhea. He yeah. just, it was like, this is a, he just, well, if you're, if you're that scared, I you're not pitching I guess if you're a limo and a guy in the back is just kicking the you're car to pinch- pieces, you're just, every, you're just evacuating everything You're not your pinching on a solid loaf. You're spraying. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't hired to drive this James Bond limo villain car. (laughs) You knew what you were getting in when you signed up for this. But, uh, (laughs) like, it was the only thing I remembered, but it got me thinking, too. It was. Uh, Go ahead. No, you go ahead. It was obvious this movie was geared towards 13 year olds. Oh, it sure was. (laughs) Uh, I I, I certainly enjoyed it. Uh, (laughs) It got me thinking do y'all have any good shitting your pants stories? No. No. Recently or <laughs> no. from somewhere in the past? No. I'm sure I shit my pants in the past, but my age was a single digit at that point. <laughs> I uh, it, it reminded me of. Uh, but apparently you do. If you're asking, <laughs> apparently you have some, I, I do you have some pants shitting yeah, stories. I, well, I was hoping you guys might. No, go ahead. Enter the fold. No, let's ahead. have a, let's have a pants shit sidebar. Yeah. All right. <laughs> When did, you, uh, when did you duke in your diapers? It would have been right around this time, actually. Middle school. <laughs> this, but this time today. It would have been around this time last night. No. Uh, 1989-ish, I guess. Uh, I I rode a carpool with a fellow uh, middle schooler. And his mother didn't want to drive out of the route to school uh, to pick me up. So I had to walk a couple blocks to a... a baseball field and she'd pick me up on the way yeah. and I was walking I was about halfway there and I G&L'd gambled and lost I, I thought it was a <laughs> fart and it, it turned into something else and I was sitting I was, I, was, I was standing there and I was like I got two options I can either go to I can either catch my ride with shit in my pants but that's going to be an interesting day at the office <laughs> or I can hightail it and run home, but she won't wait for me. I knew this chick. She would not wait for me if I wasn't at that corner. Dude, you got it. You got it. At that point, <laughs> it's like I told Tut when you when the first thing you did this morning was drop two beers as you were loading them in your truck. You get back in bed. At that point, when you walk down there and and you as you so poetically put it, gambled and lost. At that point, dude, you just go back home and take a sick day. Uh, well, that was not. I went with Plan C. Oh, oh man. Which was I went behind some shrubs, <laughs> took my soiled tidy whities off, and flung them <laughs> over some poor bastard's fence. And I went to school with no underpants on. So he, the guy, the guy who he basically just lost. He didn't give the he guy lost. that goes out there the next day. I, that old, I think I'll go pick some weeds. Oh god! Oh my god! That old retired guy who went out into his backyard <laughs> to smoke a pipe and have his morning coffee and found some twelve-year-old's. Shit, I, I, shitty drawer. I heard my yeah, seven, eight arrested. years old. Every morning I wake up is a good day. Oh God! Oh, oh, Helen, bring the defibrillator. There's some drawers out here with Dookie in them. I, I swear, I still think about it, and I always wanted to go knock oh. on his door, like as an adult, and be like, "Hey, remember in the behind the music when Leaf Garrett went and talked to the guy he paralyzed in the accident? This dude is not gonna thank you for it like that guy did. I remember." that one he's all yeah, listen, you saved my life brother this time's not gonna say that to you I always wanted to knock on his door and he's like hello and he'd be like hey brother it was me those were my underpants and like he'd look at me and we'd embrace like oh god no he's gonna answer the door <laughs> they landed like, on my back porch I walked outside dog. I slipped on he's gonna him answer the door. he's gonna answer the door with a seeing eye dog and he's all who is it and she's all oh I'm sorry it's my husband Harold he's been blind every day since June, since April of 1989 when he saw something so hideous we can't talk about it he was once a respected neurosurgeon. <laughs> I, I always wondered what happened to that guy. What yeah, I, the, nice, ni- I remember that Leave Garrett one, dude. You weren't going to get that. You used to change my life around, brother. The guy in the wheelchair, the they, 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 they embrace. <laughs> no, they wouldn't have that tender moment. 
Well, that or they were going to ask, since we have no kids, why are there 12 year old underpants in our backyard? Well, I, I just saw a lot of, que- oh, yeah. a lot of questions Turns coming out. Turns out the guy served 10 years in Huntsville for child abuse. <laughs> Because you know there was some blood in that shit. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what, were you, what were you eating at twelve years old? Uh, anyway, that's my dookie story. <laughs> well, wow. it is a magnificent story. <laughs> it was, it was an that story. I will promptly erase with alcohol. No, I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that up there. I, I want to. I, I laugh so hard it gave me tears and my my stomach hurts. Uh, well, my job is done. <laughs> Uh, she <laughs> uh, Before we get back to the story, how's the how's the beer and cigar treating you guys? I, it, my cigar's starting to burn pretty fast. I wanna, I don't want to miss out on uh, talking about it. Are you guys separating the beer and the cigar a little bit, giving them a little bit of space? I'm or trying to remember. Comfortable is a smooth bowel movement on a late '80s afternoon. Oh, I mean, no, it's, it's, it's all very good. Admit, ad, admittingly, it's very hard to lay off the beer when we're talking about this movie. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the 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 first instinct is just to to drink. <sighs> Uh, it yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a dis- it's it's definitely a disservice to the cigar f- to pair it with the beer uh, because it, the cigar's got such a real just a mild but good tobacco taste to it, but it, it's totally overpowered by the arrogant bastard. That yeah. fucking arrogant bastard. I, but uh, it's a it's a good smoking cigar. The draw on it's been great. It's got a great medium, uh, you know, on the like you said on the mild side, a medium flavor. Um, that spice has maintained for me, but very in a, in a nice, yeah. non-intrusive way. I mean, it's just it's just there, right? But it matches with that uh, the creaminess and a little bit of woodsiness. Yeah, um, I have especially I have have given it some space. I do pick up more on that the the woodsy, the yeah. leathery part. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a bit it's, of mineral to it. A little bit, yeah. yeah. But like Tut said, it's 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 mild, so yeah. it's. It is simply just being overpowered by this beer. Yeah, and I could see you really liking this away from the yeah, beer. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm talking like it's like on a day like today. If we weren't doing the podcast and I was just out on the back deck, this is a great early afternoon cigar. I have just been beat down by the day. This is a good taste of cigar. Some twelve year old just threw his fucking <laughs> underpants <laughs> over my. Th- they land on your head. Okay. No, nothing can make this day worse. <laughs> Ah, but Woodsy thank, and leathery, like but Cade's goodness, adolescent drawers. But thank goodness I have my La Gloria here. Uh, no, it, it, it'd be a perfect cigar for that day. It's a good uh, smoke. Construction-wise, I've had an excellent burn line, smooth draw, perfect amount of air going through it. Yeah. Uh, the, it's a great... I, I would say it's like in the Texas heat, like once we get into August, yeah. when it's just Balls 12-year-old hot. drawers hot. <laughs> uh, Can we save that audio for that? <laughs> It, 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 it'd be a good light smoke yeah. for that heat of the day. Uh, it's a good cigar. And the, really and the wrapper, I man, the, the, especially the hotter it gets, it's got a really oily kind of texture yeah, to it. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's just a really good looking cigar. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, pairing aside, uh, I want to smoke more. I want to. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. Uh, I like it. But uh, the leather, a little bit of cream, uh, the mineral you said, I mean, it's, it's, it's not boring. No, no. It's got it's got a lot of and this lot is, going on. This is an exclusive from Famous mm-hmm. Famous Smoke. Okay, can I tell you how much now? Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead. We prayer along. Yeah, you want to guess or? It just occurred to me that I have a Dookie have a story. Six. It's not my own. Right, hold it. It's an exclusive. Yeah. It's an exclusive. So I'll go seven, seven twenty-five. Sound good? All right. Seven dollars. Right. You get you get a four pack right now on uh, Famous Smoke Shop's website for a hair under uh, I think a hair under twenty five bucks which yeah would, or a hair under twenty eight bucks I think it's twenty seven which would bring it right uh, yeah right under twenty eight dollars which brings about seven bucks a stick yeah I, would I say think that's pretty good value in, yes uh, and this is just my opinion I think exclusives always go about one to two dollars more than what they would if they were general retail. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's a, I think it's a definitely decent price for this stick. I think it's I think it's yeah. priced accordingly. Yeah, uh, I like it. Yeah, we, we we smoked lately quite a few robustos in that price mm-hmm. range, which are gone before you know, it, and they don't really don't have time to develop uh, if you're smoking a little bit faster. Yeah, uh, seven dollars for a Toro. Uh, you know, we're what an hour and a half in. Yeah, uh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. I agree. I agree. And I'd, I'd like to try it with a, a lighter beer. Yeah. Um, 
less hoppy, just a, a little more smooth. I still think the El Super B would have been a little too much going yeah. on. Yeah, to, I think so. It, I think it would have. I think. I think it would have clashed. Uh, the less hoppiness of the Super B yeah. would probably benefit this. Sit down on your deck with the Hans Pills and this bad boy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If you if you go like a really light lager, I, I think that they, it would be good. Another good one would be coffee. I think coffee with this would be excellent. Oh yeah. yeah. Probably. Not coffee stout, like a real no, not cup, a real of cup of coffee. Yeah, we drink those too. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So thumbs up for me. I can see past the pairing, and uh, yeah, I'm liking it, uh, and I'm liking the beer too. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm I, I'm a big fan of Stone. Uh, I like their Stone IPA. I did, like what else like the Stone Regular the, uh, uh, Arrogant Bastard. Is it the IPA with the green goblin on it? Uh, that's, the, that's the Stone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's Stone. Oh, that that. Uh, that, that's, that's their other big one, right? Yes, uh, that, that's kind of their flagship. It's, all, it's like just the Stone uh, Pale Ale, I think. The Stone IPA? Or they do a Stone IPA? They do a yes. Stone IPA. They, it's weird because they do like a Stone IPA. They do a Stone Go-To IPA. Uh, but they all have the same kind of hobgoblin horn. Gargoyle. The Gargoyle has been like their Yeah, that's their, their, their logo. Main or a hobgoblin. Or it's, it's a, a gargoyle. gargoyle. Where I come from, we call them hobgoblins. <laughs> Where I come from, we call them hobgoyles. <laughs> <laughs> we call them gargoblins. Where I, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a good beer. It's definitely got yeah. a really nice back end. I love the color of it. It's got a beautiful, beautiful, deep, rich red to it. I, I like it. Agreed, boys. Agreed. Agreed.